A good afternoon to you, my beloved. Bible Billy O, just arriving at work a little early, and so I thought I'd share something from Scripture, because that's my name, after all. I just also had a thought on my mind, and that is that um, the people, the children uh, of God, are under attack. I don't think there's any uh, denying that. Um, today, uh, you don't have to look very far to see if you're, you're trying to live your life according to... Uh, what God's Word uh, instructs us, uh, that you will come up against uh, defiance outright. <laughs> and there are a lot of uh, ignorant, uh, darkened minds in politics, also in um, just the, the world in general, that will come at us. And we ought not to be surprised about it. Um, I think of the scripture that says, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. Uh, there's a lot of people just acting out in the futility of their thinking, uh, darkened thoughts. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't even blame them so much because many times they're uh, a tool of the enemy. Uh, how many know there's a real enemy of our soul? His name is Satan. Um, uh, Lucifer is another name, uh, which is a light bearer, but it's a, a, a counterfeit kind of a fake light that he gives, that he offers, uh, or just plain old the devil. You know, and um, it makes me angry sometimes because I want to uh, fulfill uh, my purpose in life. And many times it has been to come alongside other Christians and encourage them uh, to carry their burdens. It seems like that was a verse that kept coming up this morning as I was looking through my old Facebook scrolls. And, uh, and yet we're not supposed to be uh, fearful of the devil. I think it was John Wesley one time woke uh, in, a, in a white hot kind of a fear uh, from a deep sleep. And he sensed an evil presence. And he said he had a vision, as it were, at the end of his bed. He thought he saw Satan himself. Now, Satan can't be all places at all times, but perhaps he chose that moment to be attacking this great evangelist. But he said uh, in his memoirs, when he noticed it was just Satan, he said, oh, it's only you. And he rolled over and went back to sleep. Well, I don't want to be that nonchalant about our enemy. Um, he's a formidable foe. But God has given us so many uh, things in our arsenal besides his very own armor, the armor of God. Uh, one is the scripture, which is represented by the uh, sword uh, in the armor. It says in 2 Timothy 3.16, one of the great 3.16s, all scripture is breathed out by God, meaning God breathed through the men who penned the original text. And it even had the flavor of their own personalities. That's why many times scripture can look like, well, I, I hesitate to say contradicting, but you're getting all of the different flavor and nuance and uh, uh, the, the perspective of that individual, but it is God's word still being breathed. And it's profitable, it says, for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. Isn't that good news? You can be equipped for every good work. Well, a friend of mine's been studying the book of Mark, which is just such a small, condensed um, a symphony, really, of the life of Christ and how he moved about and brought healing to people. And one of the things that the Lord did is he, he carried burdens, uh, and that was really on his heart all the time. And Galatians, just before uh, another great book, Ephesians, talks about in chapter 6, bearing one another's burden. And that's the scripture I saw this morning. It says uh, that if you catch someone who's going through a time of um, sin or potential sin, transgression, it says here, you who are spiritual should restore him uh, in a spirit of gentleness. Gentleness. It says, but keep watch for yourself, lest you be tempted also. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. If there's to be a law of Christ, it would be fulfilled and it says we do fulfill it by carrying one another's burdens. Now, I've often mistaken my mercy gift, which is sometimes, um, I think, overinflated. Uh, uh, it may not be that God wants me to uh, enter into every person's suffering that I see. Otherwise, I'd be constantly in pain and, and crying. But there are moments where you have to ask, God, is this somebody you want me to come alongside? It happens throughout the day. I can't say how many times 
where I just notice in my spirit, I discern, I sense that this person's hurting, they're, they're struggling. And uh, I ask myself, do I, do I need to come up to that person? Do they, would they be offended if I say, hey, can I pray for you? Uh, pray for wisdom in those moments. And you don't, you're not designed to carry um, a burden uh, for the length of time necessarily that that same person has carried, but it could be that he wants you to just experience with them uh, as Christ would many times be acquainted with grief and sorrow. He was a man of sorrows, but then to give that burden right back to the Lord. So if you're gifted or wired kind of like I am and you sense it all around you, the pain and strife, um, it doesn't mean we have to be uh, so empathetic that we constantly are, are sad, uh, but we can have some sympathy and we can come alongside. He says, um, share the good things that you've learned. If you're, if you're one who's been taught of the word, it says, share all the good things with the one that you need to teach. But do not be deceived, he says, God is not mocked, for whatever we sow, we also reap. The one who sows in his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. The one who sows of the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And he says, let us not grow weary in doing good. If you felt like giving up, if you felt like, what's the use? It <clears throat> doesn't seem like anything I'm doing makes any difference. This scripture tells us, don't, don't give up. For in due season you will reap if you do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. It doesn't mean we ignore those who are not believers. Far from it. We, we help them with what means we may have. <clears throat> but especially in the body of faith, people are under attack, as I said at the beginning, just like you felt perhaps under attack. And they need to be encouraged, maybe with a phone call, maybe a letter, um, maybe a visit. Uh, you just pray to the Lord and ask him what he would have you to do. Uh, be faithful in doing good. And uh, I'm going to, not in my own effort, but in the Spirit's uh, strength, I'm going to go into work and I'm going to be asking him throughout the day, uh, what is it you want me to do, Lord? What will bring you the most glory? Oftentimes that's what I like to pray. Because I don't even know what the next minute, the next hour, the next day is going to hold. And that kind of benign ignorance is a good kind of ignorance because it's in God's um, providence that he makes it so. He wants us to just walk by faith. So I call you blessed today and I, I pray that you have a wonderful day in the Lord and don't embrace panic. I say to my wife, we are a family without tragedy. We don't need to um, embrace that kind of thinking. We know God is good. He has a good plan. And this year, I believe before the end of the year, we're going to see God's justice and mercy kiss, as Scripture says. And it's going to be a good year, especially going into the next year. So just keep the faith, and I call you blessed. I'll be praying for you. Please pray for us. Bye for now.